Moving on to the continuing nuclear crisis in Japan, a radioactive wave is headed toward the United States. Scientists with the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution are tracking debris from last year's Japanese earthquake and tsunami as it makes its way across the Pacific Ocean. That debris, which carries with it extremely high levels of radiation, is currently 186 miles off the coast of Japan and could start lashing the coast of the United States within the year, depending on the currents. Scientists are immediately concerned about a marine life being hit with radiation levels millions of times above normal. But by next year, it'll be in our marine food supply, our rain, and our coastal waters. So more than a year after the Fukushima nuclear crisis began, the world is still suffering its effects, with more to come. But despite all that, the Japanese government is reportedly preparing to restart one of its nuclear reactors. This week, the Japanese Prime Minister will meet with cabinet officials to discuss turning on a nuclear reactor in western Japan that's been sh shut down since the Fukushima crisis began more than a year ago. So why hasn't the world learned the lessons of nuclear power yet, even as radioactive waste is headed toward the U.S. West Coast? Kevin Camps joins me now. He's the radioactive waste watchdog at beyondnuclear.org. Kevin, welcome back. Thank you, Tom. So what is going on here? With, with the Japanese saying, I, I thought, last time we talked, in fact, I, th I thought that the consensus in Japan was no nukes. Well, there's, there's strong citizen pressure to keep now 53 of 54 reactors in Japan shut down. There's only one operating commercial reactor in Japan. It's going to shut down in early May. Japan will be a nuclear-free zone, and it's because of the anti-nuclear movement of Japan, the common citizens of Japan who, because of Fukushima Daiichi, don't want those risks in their lives anymore. And what the government and the industry are worried about is if they enter the summer with no reactors online and people's lights are still on, the electricity supply is stable, the air conditioners are working, people are going to start to ask, why do we have these risks in our midst? So the federal government, as you said, is sending their Minister of Economy, Trade and Industry to Fukui Prefecture in Western Japan to try to convince the governor there who you wants guys need a nuke. safety Running. upgrades in place before yeah. the restart. That's yeah. kind of a reasonable request sure. uh, to just get out of the way. And the feds are hinting they may just override him at this point. Whoa. Um, can these reactors be made safe? No. I mean, if you lose electricity from the grid, if you lose the emergency diesels, as happened at Fukushima Daiichi, be it an earthquake, be it an earthquake and tsunami, uh, be it some other natural disaster, Japan just in recent days was hit by another major storm. So there are many ways you can lose electricity to the safety systems, to the cooling systems. Right. And of course you've got... It could be um, a tornado in the Midwest. Uh, <laughs> floods in Nebraska last yeah. summer, which were much more serious than they ever let on at the time. Yeah. Um, this wave of radioactive waste, or what has become now this, I don't know the word, beachhead or whatever, this, this just plume. I guess is a pretty good word, um, that it, it come, it's coming off Japan and heading towards us. What is it? What does it mean? Well, uh, almost to the day a year ago, uh, Tokyo Electric intentionally released 11,500 tons or 3 million gallons of radioactive water into the ocean on purpose. The federal government of Japan gave them permission. There's recent news media reports that it was under pressure from the United States government. And the excuse Wait at the no. time... Why? The excuse at the time was that Tokyo Electric was out of storage space for radioactive water at the plant, and they had a lot more coming. They were trying to keep the reactors as cool as possible because of the meltdowns. They were clearing away less contaminated water to make room for much more contaminated water to come. That's the, that the, the, the decision they made. And that plume, as you said, it's taken a year, but it's now reached Hawaii. Another year from now, it'll probably reach the west coast of the United States. And yes, those are our fishing waters, but the fish happen to move around. There are species of tuna that spend part of their life cycle on the Japanese northeast coast, and they have migrated to the United States already. Hmm. So where is the food monitoring program? There is no post-Fukushima food monitoring program in place. It was quickly dismantled. We're back to pre-Fukushima radiation monitoring, which could miss a lot. Get to Amazon.com right now and buy a Geiger counter? Is that, the, is that our food monitoring Japan, program? You're on your own, Charlie? In Japan, um, I just met a woman in uh, New York City who's now an anti-nuclear activist, and her sisters, her nieces and nephews, are monitoring their own food, monitoring the food at the elementary school, and bringing in Fukushima refugees. Amazing. So the people of Japan have been thrown onto their own resources to protect themselves. And the people of the United States, apparently? Very much so. Uh, 
we see that up and down the West Coast, people getting radiation monitors, even to the point of checking their own food supply. Yeah, yeah. I actually bought, you know, I, in fact, I brought it in one of the times you were here on the show. Um, you visited the Fukushima plant back in 2010. We just have 20, 30 seconds left. Thoughts on that? Well, it's a dead zone where I went to, and mm -hmm. the wonderful people I met are scattered to the wind across Japan and other mm -hmm. countries. I also visited Fukui. I went to a 1,200-year-old uh, Buddhist uh, temple, and uh, they have been a strong leader in the resistance to those reactors that now are slated for restart. That's great. Kevin, thanks so much for being with us tonight. Thank you. It's always great to see you, uh, e even though it's rough news. I appreciate it. It's time for a worldwide ban on the most expensive and the most dangerous form of electricity generation on Earth, nuclear power. No nukes.